Hello everyone, this is Dr. Deeksha here. So I thought today we'll do a very uh, interesting image-based revision of renal pathology, photographs only on light microscopy. So that would include h &E, that would include PAS, and of course, silver stain. So let's start with normal and then I'll work our way to abnormal. Now this photograph is of h and &E slide of a normal glomerulus surrounded by tubules. Um, this is the Bowman's capsule, as you can make out the circular structure. Remember how in physiology you would draw? And these empty, empty circles that you see in between, these are the capillary lumen. So every empty circle within the glomerulus is a capillary. And between these areas, that the pink, pink area that you see with this gray uh, arrow, this is the mesangium. Break down the word, mes between angium vessel. So this is the mesangial matrix or the mesangium. And whatever blue nuclei you see in them, those are the mesangial cells. On this uh, level of uh, microscopy, I cannot see porocytes and their food processes separately. You know what that means? That means if something is wrong with them, as I'm sure you will recall in a very important disease called minimal change disease, because there is loss of food processes in that, photo, in that disease and that is not visible on light microscopy because porocytes and their feet are not visible on light microscopy, which is why it's a called minimal change disease, hardly any change. Next photo is a past stain slide. Remember, periodic acid shift stain gives you a nice rose pink or a magenta color. So what you see is like a background of pink with something a little brighter pink highlighted on it. And again, if you notice, all the basement membranes have come positive. So Bowman's capsule, the mesangium as well, along with the capillary basement membrane and even the tubular basement membrane, which means that when I want to see something to do with the mesangium or maybe the capillary basement membrane, I can do a past stain. This is a silver stain, a Jones methanamine silver impregnation method. Remember, anytime you get a silver stain, you're going to get a black on pink appearance. So what you see here is a nice pink background with whatever has come silver positive seen in black. And what you see are again capillary outlines that have been highlighted, the Bowman's capsule along with the tubular basement membrane. All of those have been highlighted really well with the silver stain. Now that we've seen the three normal, what I'm going to quickly do is show you normal and then snap abnormal. Normal and then snap abnormal normal and we won't diagnose them instantly what we will do is we will just look at what is wrong in that photograph so normal right let's uh, absorb this photograph in and next is abnormal so what's wrong with this photograph as i'm sure you can see in a part of the glomerulus the mesangial matrix seems to be more correct and anytime we see something more pink on h &E or any past stain slide we use the term hyalinosis so i would say that there is a part of the glomerulus showing hyalinosis in the mesangium that's it next photo this is normal normal h &E. And now look at this, what's wrong with this photograph? It's a past stain slide showing you circular pink, pink areas in the glomerulus, in the mesangium. Mesangium seems to have expanded, but the matrix is more nodular or circular. Next, normal, abnormal. What's wrong with this photo? As I'm sure you can make out, in the mesangium, the cells seem to be more. So what is different in this photograph as compared to the previous one? The previous photograph had only a mesangial increase. This has increased in number of cells as well, right? So that is the difference there. It was just plain hyalinosis. Here, there is definitely increase in number of mesangial cells. Normal abnormal what is wrong here oh my god everything has increased i can barely make out capillaries mesangium seems to be more and i cannot make out proper capillary lumen so clearly a lot of proliferation has happened here normal abnormal again would you wouldn't you agree this also seems like there's a lot of proliferation right so it's very similar to the previous slide there's a lot of proliferation cannot make out individual capillaries as clearly and mesangial matrix as well as cells seem to have increased normal abnormal now this is very interesting if you notice carefully something seems to have come between the bowman's capsule as well as the capillaries of the glomerulus so this structure that i've highlighted has a roughly crescent shape doesn't it see i'll show it to you again you can make out a crescent shaped structure. So this is light microscopy. Normal past stain. Look at this. It looks like someone took a pink color, a bit thick sketch pen, and then highlighted the basement membrane again all over. So this is, I would say, thick basement membrane on past stain. Silver stain, normal. 
look at this with the red arrows can you make out something seems to be perpendicularly protruding from the capillary basement membrane every capillary has its outline but then there is also uh, perpendicular structures coming out from them normal abnormal look at that the arrows show you the capillary basement membrane are not one but two double double basement membrane double double basement membrane so remember this photograph now let's one by one diagnose them so this was a part of the glomerulus showing you hyalinosis this is a case of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis focal word is used when a few glomeruli are involved and segmental when a part of the glomerulus is involved and sclerosis of course is the hyalinosis remember this photograph we had circular nodules of mesangial expansion so i will call this nodular glomerulosclerosis as i'm sure all of you recall that these are the kimmelston wilson nodules very characteristic of diabetic nephropathy and if this kind of sclerosis was to take over the entire glomerulus i would call it diffuse glomerulosclerosis which happens to be one of the most common findings in a diabetic nephropathy if you can also make out every every tubular basement membrane is also thick so thick basement membrane is also one of the earliest and characteristic findings of diabetic nephropathy Do you remember this photo where mesangium mesangial cells seem to have increased so i will call this pattern a mesangio proliferative pattern mesangium has proliferated and this is characteristic of ig nephropathy a henoxion in purpura when it involves the kidney and of course early cases of lupus nephritis do you remember this photo where everything seemed to have increased so the two cells that can undergo proliferation within the glomerulus that we can see are the endothelial cells and the mesangial cells so look at the name i'm going to call this mesangio capillary glomerulonephritis or membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis mpgn do you remember this photograph double double basement membrane the term we use for this is tram track appearance and this is again characteristic of mpgn Do you remember this photo a lot of proliferation so this is actually an example of acute proliferative post streptococcal glomerulonephritis the dark nuclei that you see among those cells are the neutrophils and of course the history will be very very important to tell us that we are looking at a case of psgn remember this photograph past stain slide thick thick basement membrane this is a case of membranous nephropathy and on silver stain if you look at this can you see those perpendicular areas coming out from the basement membrane this is called the spike and dome appearance of membranous nephropathy on silver stain this happens due to sub epithelial deposits formed there between the porocytes and the basement membrane and new basement membrane production this is a case of membranous nephropathy Do you remember this photograph the crescent so this is a case of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis which is the clinical term and on histology i would call it crescentric glomerulonephritis now rpgn is da is classified into three types type 1 type 2 type 3 so type 1 is anti gbm antibodies which would show you a linear immunofluorescence type 2 is immune complex mediated the examples are written in front of you and of course since it's immune complex mediated you'd have granular immunofluorescence and type 3 is anca mediated and anca mediated is also called posse immune and we have three kinds of small vessel vasculitis involved in that vaginus chirostros and microscopic polyangiitis So any time you get a light microscopy photograph of any renal glomerular disorder you go step wise and the diagnosis is then very simple so let's see we would first check whether it is nephritic or nephrotic from the clinical history itself we can rule out a couple of options we will check whether areas of pink are more if they are more without increase in number of cells we would then check whether it is nodular diffuse or segmental but then we would check whether there's proliferation is it only in the mesangium or is it in both both the kinds of cells and then we will see any special stains like pass or silver and see if there's any special appearance on it for example sp uh, spike and dome appearance tram track appearance and then of course if the information has been provided or a photograph of electron microscopy has been provided we can then check the site of deposits if available so i hope this quick review helped you in revising and figuring out how to what to look for in every photograph um i'll follow this up in some time with a photograph with an uh, video on immunofluorescence as well so that we can put together both the findings together for all glomerular disorders uh, please let me know how you found the video and uh, all the very best